Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, today I wanna to do something very different. We are gonna look at a very cool vintage Kmart radio. This is not it, obviously. This is the Crosley CT100, which is awesome. But I wanted to start here because I made these really cool, at least I think they're cool, Kmart background audio music tapes. Now these are not period correct. In fact, they don't look anything like this in real life. Um, but originally, uh, SS Kresge Company, or you know what we know as Kmart, uh, was having background music on records. By the way, all of those records can be found on archive.org, not all of them, like dozens of them can be, uh, like in the 60s. That's how they had their background music. And then eventually they went to reel-to-reel -reel tape. Uh, these are dubs of those reel-to-reel -reel tape. Uh, and then eventually to cassette tape in the 80s, and by then they were kind of using pop music, not just this old school sort of background music uh, that I love. So I took uh, some of the older ones. By the way, all that stuff you can, you can hear on archive.org. Uh, but I took some of them and I dubbed them on these old, new old stock um, Ampex cassette tapes, just for fun. So to get us in the vintage Kmart mood, here's a little uh, Kmart spot, which I think is pretty fun. Okay, so, and I guess I can let that play, because I don't think any of this is copyrighted. Um, at least I don't think they're actively scanning for this stuff, and it's a nice kind of background feel to what we're doing. So, um, why Kmart? You may be saying, what in the world, Kmart? It's nostalgic to me. I grew up going to Kmart a lot of the time. You know what I mean? This is, you know, before I really went to Walmart or anything like that, just growing up in the 80s and, and early 90s, we went there a lot for a lot of our staple items. So I have a nostalgic you know, place in my heart. I never heard this music in the background though. I wish I did, but I, I've, really, I've really grown to love this kind of vintage background music. By the way, if you like that kind of music, check out Fardemark's channel. My friend does a fantastic job with a lot of Seberg stuff and vintage stuff. So anyway, I recently came across this guy right here. It's a Kmart, as you can see the label there, and that is actually raised lettering. It's not just, you know, written on there or screen printed. Kmart Vintage Radio, Vintage Transistor Radio. And now this is the fun part for you guys. I need your help in identifying the year this was made. Uh, and if you can help me identify who made it, that would be great. Because as you can see, it says manufactured for the SS Kresge Company. So it was definitely not made by them, which is no surprise. I love how it says made in Hong Kong and here on the back as well. That's not something that you see very often made in Hong Kong. Um, so I'm guessing early 70s. If I had to put a, uh, if I had to guess, I'd say like 72, 73, because they don't use the word um, transistor radio all over it, which was popular marketing terminology for radios in the 60s as things you know shrunk in size and got smaller. So you may be saying, well, what's a transistor? What's a transistor radio? So really quickly. You've heard of vacuum tubes, which are a vintage means for amplification of electronic signals. Eventually, in the 50s, they designed transistors, which did the same thing. They amplified, but they were they, they used a lot less power and they were a lot smaller, so they could have portable radios for the first time that were a lot smaller. This is kind of a chunky portable radio, but uh, the whole idea of these little tiny transistor pocket radios were quite fashionable in the 60s as the electronic components shrunk. Uh, this one is really neat, and uh, it's got a tuning dial. We've got a volume slider. It's super noisy, so we're gonna open it up. Um, I've got some electronic cleaner. We're gonna spray some contact cleaner in there, 
and give it a test. Now this leatherette case is not really a case. It's actually glued on to the plastic body, but there is a way to access the inside. So let's take a closer look at that. Now, before we get too much further, I wanted to give you guys a sample of what it sounds like. So it's got an extendable antenna right up there, power switch. Make your backyard the best place to... But as you can hear, Charbroil fiber. that Just volume knob is oxidized, which is very common and can be easily remedied. So I don't think this needs any other restoration work. Other, I mean, I was originally going to call this a uh, Kmart radio restoration video, but I don't think it needs restoration a little bit here. So like these chrome covered plastic knobs, you know, need new chrome. I may just paint them black or something. But today I just wanted to kind of show this to you and um, yeah, we'll clean it up a bit and get it working good. Uh, Fartemark recommended that I get a little AM FM transmitter so we can broadcast the music right into the device. That would be cool. That would be really, really cool. I also thought about splicing in a line input or something like that, which I may do, but you know, this is just a cool item to have. So as was pretty common with these leatherette kind of uh, encased electronics, there's these snaps that open up on the back here and the whole back panel then opens up, Aww. which is super, super cool. Check it out, a schematic diagram. How many electronics come with a built-in schematic diagram? And a little piece of orange sponge up here to help hold the batteries in tight. Runs on C batteries, you can do that. Or it's got the AC cable, AC cord, which we're using. And then that can be tucked up under here. I love how they put the ribbon in there. You put that under the cord so that, or you put this under the batteries. So when you want to pull the batteries out, you don't need to turn it upside down and smack it like we usually do. You can just pull the ribbon out and the batteries will come out. So we got some warnings in there, a UL sticker. So it is underwritten, Underwriters Laboratory, I think is what that stands for. Basically making sure that it's up to par in terms of not shocking you to death. Ventilation holes, which line up with these ventilation holes in the lid. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. These are the only screws to access the unit. So uh, in order to get to that volume slider, we're gonna need to open it from the back. So that's what we are going to do next. So let's get started on these screws and see what's inside. Okay, so I got all the screws out, but it doesn't wanna easily come out. By the way, you can see this dried glue and stuff along the edges here. This thing has probably never been taken out in its decades of service. So I got a little razor here. I'm gonna try and manipulate the seam here. Yeah, this will work. Just takes a little bit of elbow grease. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe it'll work. It looks so simple. Okay, here we go. Perhaps not seen in 40, 50 years, guys. Here it comes. Good grief. Again, help me on a date if you guys can, if you know. All right, here we go. Big reveal. Ah, cool, look at that. Look at that. Probably not seen the light of day since the early 70s, possibly the 60s. Look at that. Pioneer speaker. Look at that. Do you think this is made by Pioneer, you guys? Could this be a Pioneer brand radio? Oh, that circuit board. Look at those resistors. And, oh, it all looks so vintage. Cool. That is awesome. Bad news is uh, the volume sliders on the back of that circuit board. So I am going to have to think about how we're gonna to get to that. We may not be able to do this from the back. We may just need to spray in the contact cleaner under the slider. But check that out, guys, let's take a closer look. Pioneer 8 ohm, 0.5 watt speaker. Apollo Corp, interesting. I love this stuff, it's like a time capsule. It is, like inside this radio, this is 1971, 72, whatever it is. Nothing has changed in here since then. Even the wires look old, like the colors of the wires. Wow, isn't it amazing the power supply is that close to the speaker? That's crazy, look at the capacitors, they're huge. Okay, I'm gonna take a closer look, see if we need to do this from the front or the back, so stand by. 
Okay, so I've decided to try initially to clean it from the front first, just because it makes more sense. I don't want to have to take that circuit board out if I don't have to. In fact, sometimes you can pull these volume knobs off. Sometimes they just pop up. It doesn't want to seem to come out. But I think if we, I got some contact cleaner here. So by the way, it's like $4 at Walmart. You don't need the name brand one. Um, this, is, this should work just fine. We just spray it right in there, should do the trick. And then exercise this up, get the cleaner in there, lubricate it a little bit. Uh, make sure it's not plugged in, make sure it's not energized when you're doing this, but it's pretty simple stuff. So we don't need a whole lot. Just gonna... In there. Just like that. Oh, it smells lovely. But that really, guys, that really should do the trick right there. But it was fun to look inside. It's always good to have an excuse to look inside. All right. It is plugged in. Look at that. All that noise is gone just by spraying that cleaner in there. Let's see if I get locked onto an actual station. Four dollars. Not a sponsor, but maybe they should be. I should have bought this stuff a long time ago. I literally just sprayed it right in on the front. Didn't have to take anything apart. It works perfectly, you guys. How cool is that? A vintage Kmart radio. So again, I need your help. Let's date this thing. I could not find any pictures on Google or anywhere of this device. And so, you know, what year is it? Let's date it. And let's also see if we can, you know, pinpoint who made it. Model 31-60 AM FM portable radio working as good as new. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. Happy record hunting for now. We'll catch you real soon.